emergency. Today on Rescue 911, our rooftop view ends in disaster. <gasps> An elderly man plunges two stories to face death. Make sure that he's breathing. Paramount force, Crambo. He was a lot worse than I thought. His chances were almost 100% that he was going to die. Plus, a four-year-old must save her mom's life. Your mama's sick, honey. Yes, and she's bleeding bad. I thought she didn't die. On Rescue 911. In 1994, 72-year-old Bar Rowley and his wife were hosting their annual 4th of July barbecue. Their large family, including 15-year-old grandson Ryan Blazer, had no idea how intensely their faith was about to be tested. Much of the footage in this story was taped as the events unfolded on that day and those that followed. Me and my grandpa wanted to go up on the roof to see if we could get a better view at the fireworks. Watch your step on here. Okay. Careful. Why don't you get up there? Right up on here. A good steady base, yeah. Okay. Oh, boy. He's a lot of fun to be with. He does a lot of fun things. Even though he's 73 years old, he's really active. Barr's wife of 32 years, Zelfa, was watching from below with the rest of the family. Barr and I have about 40 grandkids. All these grandkids really love him. When I walked over to the skylight and looked down, I was totally horrified. I didn't know what was wrong with him. I just figured he was gonna get back up, but he didn't. 911 emergency. Hi, my grandma just fell off the roof. She just fell off of the roof? Yeah, she was on the roof and fell off. Was your grandfather? Yeah, my grandfather. Okay, I need you to find out, make sure that he's breathing. Okay, he's breathing. Is he breathing? Yes, he's, he's breathing, but very badly. Okay, is he conscious? When we continue, people with advanced age don't do well with trauma, and he had particularly severe injuries. When Samaritan Aravac flight nurse Liz Tyson arrived, a medic unit was already at work on VAR. Basically, he's got a wrist left up his abdomen. VAR, take a deep breath for me. Good, another one? Have you listen to lung sounds? Yeah, I don't really hear much. I hear some slight breath sounds in the upper lobe here. And this VAR, does your abdomen hurt, your stomach hurt? Diminished, but I can hear uh, equal lung sounds. Yeah? Small lobe. Chris, we have a 230-pound male uh, fell from house second floor down onto concrete going to Scottsdale Memorial. Level one, trauma, and let's go hot. Bar, are you having any pain anywhere? <coughs> Bar, in your, in your chest right here, are you having a hard time breathing? The patient was complaining of pretty significant left-sided abdominal pain and pretty significant leg pain in the femur area. You can lose two to three units of blood just into your femur alone. He's still not moving his chest at all. His left abdomen was rigid. We're at the hospital now, okay? At Scottsdale Memorial Hospital, 72-year-old Var Rowley was admitted under the care of emergency physician Kurt Solom. Do you know what date it is? What's the date today? Huh? Do you know what day we're celebrating here today? He was able to move everything and feel everything, but he clearly wasn't thinking correctly, still disoriented. So we knew he was at high risk for a brain injury. He had abdomen pelvis. Okay. So you'll need a left femur shot. Left femur. Okay. X-ray, please. Yes, please. Hold it. Hold it. Okay. Okay. Good. 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 But the initial CAT scan most certainly showed uh, multiple brain injuries. Mm -hmm. 
down there. Among those treating Var was trauma surgeon Dennis Weiland. Big left we saw that his pelvis uh, and sacrum were pretty severely fractured, and he had a large accumulation of blood around the fracture site. The scan of his head demonstrated small clots inside the substance of the brain as well as around it. Looks like the only operation he's going to need right now is to have his hip fixed uh, once he stabilizes. But I doubt they'll do anything tonight because of his head injury. Uh, with everything that's going on with him, I would uh, feel really good if he got out of here in a month. A month? Uh, he may need some transfusions. People with advanced age don't do well with trauma, and he had particularly severe injuries. Do you know where you are now? In the hospital. It was uh, rather shocking to see him laying there. He was a lot worse than I thought. I thought he would be talking to me. Over the next few days, doctors waited for Var to stabilize so they could operate on his badly broken leg and pelvis. You're looking a lot better than your skylight. <laughs> Why are you squeezing everyone while I'm talking? Probably. At that time, it just seemed like my father was pretty much with it, but slowly it got worse. Var's pelvic surgery went well, but there were other, more serious complications. He had this overwhelming pneumonia. He went into kidney failure, uh, which made his prognosis even worse. He then became uh, really pretty comatose as a result of the hemorrhage into his brain, as a result of the, the systems that were failing. It got worse and worse. It was very hard for the family to see him drifting deeper and deeper into a, you know, a coma state. Bar. As time went on, there was absolutely no response from him at all. Bar. Can you squeeze my hand if you hear me? Var had been in a coma for six weeks. We're into a point now where we're rendering what's called futile care. And what that means is that we're giving him treatments. We're not sure we're making him any better. His chances were almost 100% that he was going to die, and then we're making him suffer a lot more than he would have otherwise. We felt that his brain, in view of the hemorrhage, and in view of his age and the advanced disease, would never really come around. My recommendation would, would be is to quit dialyzing him. They felt like if he uh, couldn't talk and was on all these machines, would it be better to take the machines off and? let him go he'd already told me prior to the accident that he would not allow himself to be left on any kind of life support even though i knew he could survive i was asking myself would he want to survive i knew he wouldn't want it that way Var's always got to be doing something he's always doing something he likes to go out into the outdoors he just tried his uh, turn at water ski in two days before this happened. After knowing a man that was so strong and full of life and everything, to see him in that state was very, very difficult. The day after the doctors had told us that he didn't really stand much of any chance at all, I was in the room talking to my dad, like I always did, and I saw a little glimmer of awakeness and my sister Penny came in. He's doing great. Look at him. He's awake. Dad, oh my gosh. We started talking about his dad's awake. He can hear what we're saying. He's responding. He'll squeeze your hand. And Penny and I both started crying and my brother Gordon thought that we were crying because he just died. And that wasn't the reason why. And I told him these are tears of joy. Barr spent a month at Desert Samaritan Medical Center undergoing intensive therapy and step with your right. Very good. The doctors over at Scottsdale uh, were about ready to give up on me, about ready to unplug the, everything and let me go. When the doctor saw me, they helped him to move around. He figured it was nothing but a miracle. I sure do feel, feel like a miracle man. Dr. Martin. <laughs> yeah. I thought you might remember me before, but the odds that VAR would make it through this were 
maybe 10,000 to 1. About six weeks, I don't remember anything. He's obviously a very tough character, and uh, lesser people who hadn't taken care of themselves certainly wouldn't have survived it. I picked this walker up and walk around that tree and back. Well, that's good. We'll have to get you a little heavier walker. <laughs> Four months later, the whole Rowley family gathered together to celebrate Thanksgiving. Oh, my goodness, he's got a strong arm. We've always had a big turkey dinner. Zelta always does a wonderful job. And she's got four turkeys bought this year. We hope, hope it's enough to feed everybody. See you too. It's good to be here. <laughs> when my mom called my grandpa and I was able to talk to him, the first thing he said, joked around, was, so you pushed me off the roof, huh? <laughs> we were laughing about that. I'd really miss Grandpa's friendship and just his love. It'd be hard to be without Grandpa. Got a lot of hungry people. Tell him, grab a plate and get with it. I was telling my grandson when he was up there taking pictures, be careful that skylight there. Then I'm the one that fell through it. I didn't didn't heed my own warning. Hey, you. Goodbye. This incident reminds me just how fragile life is. Now I can let Bar know how I feel about him and I appreciate him and love him. <laughs> we get a second chance with Bar. I have to watch him now. Be sure that he doesn't do things he shouldn't be doing. I don't want him up on the roof anymore. <laughs> I just want to thank everybody for the support that they've given me. Starting with my wife, Zelfa. Without my wife around, life wouldn't be worth living. Not even any quail out here. Next. Your mama's sick, honey? Yes, and she's really bad. How old are you? Four. Late on the morning of November 16, 1994, in Denver, Colorado, 29-year-old Cheryl Scott was home by herself. Around 11.50, Cheryl's daughter, 4-year-old Bree Lynn, came home from school. The bus dropped me off from school. Mom, Mom! My mom was sick. And I got that one thing that you put in your mouth. Ah. Uh, do uh, you think you can go get me some blankets? Sure. Hold the toilet beeps. Okay, honey. I got a ton of blankets, like my sleeping bag, everything. Because she was so cold. Why don't you go in the kitchen and get a dumpling and watch TV? Yeah. <laughs> 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 My mom was bleeding. I was scared. But she teached me. My one one's for, for the help. South Metro 911 operator Corey Friend took the call. My first inclination was, was this little girl okay? Is mom okay? What's happened here? I needed to know that to know how I was going to talk to her. What's your name? Breelin. Breelin? Yeah. All right, Breelin. Is there anybody else home with you and your mom? No, it's just me and her. It's just you? Well, you're doing a wonderful job. For a four-year-old to go through that, to think her mommy's dying, and to be able to stay on the phone with me and not leave, that was a real challenge. I know what to do. I thought she was going to die. Can Mama talk to you? Um, or is she... she said a little bit. A little bit. 
but she was not getting answers back from her mother. Bree Lynn was the only person at that call who was going to be able to give me information, and I could not let her go. She's gonna have a baby, but she lost it. Berlin? What? Does your daddy live with you? Yeah, but um, he's working right now. Okay. Do you know the telephone number where daddy is? No, but I think my mom knows. That's okay. That's okay. You stay on the phone with me, okay? And we're gonna have somebody right out there to help you with this. Okay. Once we determined that we thought we had a miscarriage call, I knew we wanted to treat mom for shock. This is going to be hard, but I think you can do it, okay? All right? You're going to go in and get pillows off the bed. You're going to come back. You're going to put them under mama's feet. Okay. And then you're going to get back on the phone with me, okay? Okay, I'll do that right Okay, now. big girl. If we don't get help to a miscarriage patient right away, they can bleed to death. That's a very real situation, a real concern for us. Is there anybody here with you? No, it's me, my mom, and my caddy. Just you and your mom? Can Thank you take you. us to her? Yeah. Come on, guys. Hi. Hi. This is Engine 61. Where well, that you? is the cutest little girl. If you've got something to give her, you give it to her. What a doll baby she we'll is. Take care of her. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, we'll bye bye. See you in a minute. Hello. Hi. Well, EMT Glenn Giordano was, was a member of the Cunningham Fire Rescue Team mean? that responded. What's wrong? It was difficult at first to ascertain what had happened to the patient because she was confused, trembling, very sweaty, very pale. Sure, how long has this been going on today? What gave our crew concern was she couldn't describe the amount of blood loss, if it was minimal, moderate, or severe. Um, we'll probably take an ambulance ride today. You get to ride all along in the ambulance with your mom. Paramedic Dave Nixon tried to reassure Bree Lynn. She's got some oxygen in her nose. It didn't get as bad as it could have because her daughter activated a 911 system and got us there within five minutes. Well, we got it warm in here for you. Oh, yeah. There was a washcloth on the bed. There was a thermometer. Her mother was covered up. She had raised her feet as best she could. And she stayed on the line with the dispatcher. For a four-year-old girl to be brave enough and take a situation under her control at that age and initiate the 911 call, okay, it's remarkable. Right. You be safe, sweetie. At Aurora Presbyterian Hospital, emergency physician Roger Hirsch determined that 29-year-old Cheryl Scott was suffering from a uterine infection. This was potentially a very serious situation. Infections in the uterus are easily spread to the bloodstream. If the infection gets into the bloodstream, it can progress so fast that no antibiotic is strong enough to kill it. One month later, Cheryl has recovered without any further complications. How would you like that to chase after you? You're as big as this fight. Really? She had walked in to check up on me, and that's when I start hemorrhaging. She kind of freaked out a little bit, but she helped me back into bed. This is the uh, Tyrannosaurus Rex. This is the meanest dinosaur there was. I don't remember her talking to anybody on the phone or anything, but she's definitely my hero. She saved my life. She actually saved my life. You know what that's called? Cheryl's fiance, Rod Pearson, is also proud. I'm just thankful that we're lucky enough to have Relin there to save her mom and that Cheryl's okay. And 
Everything's just going fine right now. We'll make our own our own invention of a bug, okay? Because I did something really good. Everybody calls me a hero. But oh, please don't say that. Get it to come over here, Brelin. When she had Brelin, it was like a miracle baby for her to have because the doctors told her she wasn't able to have one. Pull one at a time. She's happy. She looks totally cool. I love my mama. She knows whole, whole wide world. I love her that much. Count me. Count how many. Do you wish you had, like, 10,000 others like me?